It's Coach Zach, head coach here at 24-7 Hockey, and in this video, we're gonna talk about the top three ways that you can create more turnovers in a hockey game. One, pressure the puck. Now, it may seem simple, but you would be amazed on how many players don't go full speed after that puck carrier if they're a little bit further away. So if they don't think they're gonna to get to that puck carrier in time before they make the play, then they stop skating and they kind of coast and they look to try to pick off that pass. No, that's wrong. Watch players at an elite level and then watch players on your team or even watch videos of yourself play. How hard do you go after that puck carrier? You should go after that puck carrier as fast as you possibly can with your stick on the ice with the intention of pressuring them to make a bad play. Not with the intention of you getting that puck and you picking off the pass, but with the intention of pressuring them to make a bad play. So you have to pressure that puck hard. Then when they move the puck, if they move the puck before you get to them, you slam on the brakes, you get back up through the ice and get back up involved in the play. You don't have to finish the check if you're too far away. So don't get lazy. Don't coast if you don't think you're gonna get to them in time. Don't go in and coast and make a big circle when they move the puck. Pressure the puck hard. Stop, slam on the brakes when they move it and get back up the ice. And if they don't move it, then you're going through the body. So you're going in there with the intention of having your stick on the ice and going through the body. Two, you have to have stick on stick, body on body. So we kind of talked about this a little bit at the end of point one, but stick on puck means that your stick's on the ice and that stick is on the puck. It's in that passing lane. It's in the passing lane that they're trying to move. It's gonna make it a lot harder for them. And what's happening, if you do this right, they're gonna delay. They're gonna hesitate because they're not gonna see a passing lane. If the stick's up and you're skating like this or your stick's not in the passing lane, then they're gonna make it, e you're making it easy on them and more than likely they're gonna be able to make the pass and you're not gonna create that turnover, right? Right? So stick on the ice, on the puck, which means no matter how far away you are from that player, you might be 10 feet away, you're still putting your stick on the ice and putting it in that passing lane, that stick on puck. And as you get closer to them, that lane, you're staying, you're keeping your stick right in that lane and that's attacking right on that puck. So if you drew a line from your stick to their puck, that's the line that your stick should be in the entire time that you're attacking. And then body on body. So even though that your stick is there in that passing lane, you're not looking there. Your eyes are on the body and you're going through the body. The only time you take your eyes off the body is if you feel them pass that puck and it hits your stick. So if you actually deflect the pass and you feel it on your stick, you don't need to look for it, you'll feel it. That's when you can take your eyes off because now that's a loose puck, you can look for the puck, right? But what happens is a lot of players, they go in, they either are going just for the body, making the pass easy, because your stick's not in the passing lane, or they go in at that puck and the player can make a head fake, they can fake a pass, they can make a stick handle, and then because you're going in that puck, you're getting beat then. And that's the last thing you want. You don't want that player that you're pressuring to beat you one-on-one. -on -one. So you have to go in, stick on puck, body on body, and that right there is gonna create a ton of turnovers because you wouldn't believe how many players panic when they don't see that passing lane. Or you wouldn't believe how many times that you can go in and they're gonna try to make that extra move on you thinking that you're gonna bite like so many players have done before but you're gonna finish that check and then you go in and you get that puck so stick on puck body on body and you have to do it consistently you can't just do it once in a while you got to do it every single time you're pressuring the puck every single time you're the closest player to the puck you move your feet you pressure that puck you get your stick on the ice in the passing lane and you attack body on body and if you do that consistently you're gonna be taking away time and space you're gonna be making players nervous because they're gonna feel that pressure coming on them and they're gonna see the sticks in the passing lane and they're either going to get rid of it quick and make a bad play or they're going to try to make an extra play to beat you one on one and because you're going in with the right mindset you're going to be able to knock them off the puck and a lot of times either a teammate or yourself is going to be able to get that loose puck and create that turnover so whenever you're the closest player you start stick on stick body on body you go hard and that's going to allow you to create more turnovers three this is probably the biggest key that you need to learn. So it's not always gonna be the first guy that's creating the turnover. When you get better and you're playing at higher and higher levels, if the first guy is doing his job, like we just talked about, stick on stick, body on body, pressuring the puck, normally in certain situations, yeah, they're gonna be able to create a turnover just from that, but normally that first 
uh, that puck here is still going to be able to make a decent play. If the first guy is doing a great job, that play is not going to be as good. So they're going to take away a little bit of time and a little bit of space that they normally would have had. So maybe they're not going to be able to make that perfect pass. Maybe they have to use the boards. Maybe they have to make an indirect pass. Maybe they're starting to pass it into the player's feet because you took away the passing lane. That's where players two and three come in. So now players two and three can't just be sitting back. As player one is pressuring, you need to be moving to get yourself in position. You can't wait. Don't wait for the, for the puck carrier to move it. As player one is pressuring, player two and three need to be attacking as well, but attacking those, those uh, next forwards. So don't follow the puck. Don't go to the puck here. Go to open player one and go to open player two. So two and three have to be moving that to get their feet. What's gonna happen is if the first play is not perfect, then player two, you're gonna be there pressuring. You might be able to create that turnover, but what you need to plan for is the third player. So if one pressures, stick on stick, body on body, not gonna make as good of a play, then two's gotta pressure, stick on stick, body on body. That player's gonna even have less time and make a worse play, and then three's gonna be there for the turnover. So every time you gotta to think one and two need to do their job for number three to be able to get the puck and if any of those players don't do it right that's what's going to allow a clean breakout or that's what's going to allow a clean line rush that's what's going to allow them to maintain possession in the offensive zone so one has to do their job to eliminate time and space and that means the second guy that gets the puck isn't going to have as much time and the pass isn't going to be perfect and then two's got to be going at that guy pressuring and already anticipating that the puck's going to go there and then three's got to be already moving because that's where that turnover is going to happen so it takes three players typically now once in a while you're going to get to a point where one or two is going to be able to create the turnover just because you get in the habit of doing that and you're going to catch them making a mistake or you're going to be in a good position and so it's not every time like that but that's what you need to plan for you need to plan for one to pressure two to pressure three to create that turnover and if you do that right typically you're going to be very hard to beat and you're going to create a ton of turnovers as an individual player and as a line. I hope that makes sense. I hope that helps you create more turnovers in a game. If you want to train like an elite hockey player, if you want to build the skills, the skating skills and the stick skills necessary to be able to do this consistently, take our free hockey training quiz. Figure out the number one area that you need to work on to take your game to the next level and then get a free workout to actually improve that area. So it's freehockeyworkout.com. You're going to go there. You're going to take our hockey training quiz. You're going to figure out exactly what you need to work on to take your game to the next level. These are things that your coaches probably aren't working on you with. So you're going to figure out the one thing that you need to do to take your game to the next level and then we're going to give you the training to be able to do it. So it's freehockeyworkout.com. You can type that in or you can go into the description at the top link. We'll have it there as well. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed yet. Turn on those notifications so you get notified every time we release a new video. And leave me a comment below. What do you think it takes to create more turnovers in a hockey game? Did I miss anything? Is that there anything that you want to add to this? Is there anything that you learned? Leave a comment below and let me know what do you think it takes to create more turnovers in a hockey game and if you agreed with any of my points.